He gives you a lot of room to explore yourself. He gives you really wide parameters of what to do. Set felt very open and free in that way. Like we could, we could really explore and go go down different paths. It's kind of like I don't really prepare in the sense of some structured organization of changing people, you know? I think I just get people to relax. It's like simple, you know? Well, Jim from the very beginning was, was um, wanted a, a really intimate relationship. I only speak for myself with, with me. I saw once we all got into rehearsals together that he had made a relationship with all of the actors, very, very intimate relationships with them. Um, you know, he would call me up if he knew I was in, if he was in New York City and I was in New York City before we started shooting, he'd be like, all right, Jake, it's Jim. I just woke up, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, and blah, you want to get together? And then we'd get together and, he, you know, we'd, he would, we would, we would spit ideas back and forth at each other, and it, the whole thing, the whole process was always like that. Yeah, when we were in Santa Fe, we would always go over to each other's houses and um, do the scenes. And Jim would start acting one of the parts, and you wouldn't know if he was playing your part or if he was playing like another actor's part. And you were just supposed to improvise with him, but you weren't sure like who you were supposed to be playing. It was pretty like sometimes he'd play Jake and expect me to play Toby, and like. Same with those guys. Sometimes he'd play Jake to Jake and ask Jake to play me, you know, and things like that. Naturally, somebody wants to make a film and they're usually ultra prepared, which is admirable. And, you know, they, um, they have a clear idea, which is admirable. So it's sort of special to meet somebody who has that, but also is so curious about what might happen. Most filmmakers arrive for a day's work and they have a script and the objective is to shoot that. That's the amount of script. And at this point in his career, Jim arrives and he has a set and he has a group of actors and he sees what happens when the actors start to find out what the scene is about. It's just deflected. That's, good. That's very good. It's a powerful moment. Okay, great. Let me try something like that. Okay. Right, just try it again. Try it once. Yeah. I watch every day as he like travels through the schedule of our movie puts the actors into the, I, I call, I, I've described it as like chopping vegetables. Like he comes in in the morning and he chops the vegetables and then he throws them into the pot and he stirs them around and he stirs them around and someplace mid-morning you see what the soup is going to be and then he seasons it. He always comes to the set so perplexed about it, you know, and, and it's, it's, he's in a dilemma all the time, which is, which is great, you know. I mean, he's in the right kind of dilemma, you know, questioning the, the essence of the story, you know, how it really, how it, where the human factor is, you know. I think you should go after it a bit more. Why is it funny? Just explain. No, just, just tell me, you know, like for the kid. It's a bit like water and ice. There's a certain point at which it has to become ice, and it, 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 you just have to leave it then, you know, because you're going to make the movie. So it's best if that happens in front of the camera, you know, if you see it change from a fluid to a you know, a solid state in front of your eyes, because it seems like magical transformation then. But that's a very hard thing to achieve. It's very exciting to watch. It's, it can be risky, because you're not sure where the film is going, and the film's being shot out of sequence. You have to have the entire movie in your head at all times while you're vamping on the original script. But I think it's virtuous that what's happening in a scene in a Jim Sheridan film has a reality that's often absent in other people's films. What's wrong? Izzy. Okay. Hi. So I'm like, whatever happens is going to happen in front of the camera. It's going to happen between people and... And, and the visual has to adapt to catch up with the souls of people rather than the visual is going to dictate the soul of a person, you know? And Jim will say, well, you know, you know, maybe, you know, really the camera shouldn't move. The camera movement just breaks that scene. Just do one without any movement at all. And sure enough, it's just transformed. It's a whole different thing when you take this subjective move out of it and just say, now just look at the actors. And although as, as 
artists, we can take the visual experience to a very heightened level visually, you know, and in production design and every aspect of that. Sometimes that won't improve it because sometimes it's not about what's visually presented, but what's presented from, from emotions or the soul. But what's wonderful is he finds that gem, that, that the heart of every scene in every scene. I mean, there's none, there's none that go by where you don't find it. He finds it every time, and, he, and, he, and he, we just be sure that the camera's right there for it. Can I get up, Mom? Dad, it's not bedtime. Does it depend on the angle? I don't know. Does it depend on the lens? I doubt it. So I've never really, within the technicalities of movies, lenses, lighting, all of those contribute, but internally, I feel you can make a movie where the camera has fallen. You ever do that with your video camera? Like it's, it's fallen and it's on the ground and you still hear the conversations and you can make up what the movie is. Well, that's just as powerful as actually training the camera on anybody because it's about the picture in the viewer's head. For him, the best crafts are the crafts that are invisible. Um, that a costume designer, people should be wearing clothes, not costumes. Sets should look like shouldn't look like sets. Sets should look like houses. They should be dressed naturally. Exteriors should be, you know, the way they would occur in natural life. And it's, it's very much in Jim's style to take something that is very, very natural and then to sort of slightly amplify it. I kind of do like making movies with children because I don't know why. I think it's easier in certain ways, you know? I know people think it's harder because you can never predict what kids will do. Um, but I kind of like that because it's like lightning in a bottle, you know? Well, it's a Jim Sheridan movie, so naturally the movie is really about those two kids. Um, and. I believe that if Jim had the opportunity to cut us out and have people still see the movie, he may have basically made the movie about those two girls. Jim Sheridan is, he's very cool. He, he brings out my character and then he messes around and then he goes straight back to directing. And he gets me to think about my character, to help me know, okay, my dad's in war. I get a good relationship with Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, he, it's been a great experience with him. He is really good with children. It's, it's a difficult thing. I mean, you, you see so many child actor performances in so many movies that are just dull and wooden or go into the very Hollywood cutesy thing, and he manages to stay away from both of those extremes. You know, the, the children in his movies seem real. They seem like real kids. Jim directs children as if they were adults. He gives them incredibly complex directions, and they respond. They respond to how they're being approached. He makes you just want to think and have fun and everything. Ephemeral is the perfect word for a, a Jim Sheridan set because it was all, it was literally like there there is never anything that stays solid within you know a day's work and you know if some poor you know PA walks up and he doesn't know what he doesn't know how he feels about a scene Jim will pull the PA and ask them what they think in front of everybody and get their opinion and then we'll shoot for that day according to what that person thought. I think ultimately everyone feels like a family in the end. You got 400 people all working on something, waiting for something to happen. And it's almost like you're better off going, like forget all that, let's just relax and make it more human, make it simpler. And bring out the emotion, bring the inner life of the people out as opposed to sticking a camera in front of their face and say perform. I'm not really that interested in performance, even though people think I'm really good with the actors. In a certain regard, performance is a lie, you know what I mean? 